Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. One of the most important tools that man has in their possession is statistical analysis and statistics, data collected from statistics and whatnot. And can you imagine a world where we didn't take, didn't take the time to, to register statistics and facts and data? I mean, it helps the farmer. We've been talking last week about all the crops and stuff and how many bushels per acre and what the farmer was making all. Say that we never kept data on all that. Farmers wouldn't know week to week if they had a good crop. I mean, from crop to crop where they had a good crop, they were making less money or more money on, on that acre of land they were growing. So you can see where statistics play a very, very important role in our society. Not only for man, but the plant and animal world to also, I mean, Everything that goes on in the environment, uh, species, the way they behave in the environment, how they survive, all that is based on statistics that have, over the years and years of millennium, have been registered through, through the experiences of all the animals and plants. And humans are no different. And we use statistics to our fullest here in, the, in our society. Most, most of everything that everybody does in a given day is in some way, shape, or form regulated by statistics. Uh, the uh, miles per gallon that our car is going to get as we drive down the highway it makes us help choose which model we want. You know, some people want more economy. They're going to go with one that statistics show gives better miles per gallon. They're going to go into the grocery stores and they're going to look at all of the costs per ounce and whatnot and the trends of what food prices are and all. And these, all these things, none of that would exist if people didn't take the time to write down the data, analyze the statistics, and publish them. Statistics probably are, if you, if you really want to put it simply, it's probably one of the most important regulators in society. And with the reason that it is so important is because it gives a very accurate handle on what's going on out there, not just with our lives as humans, but with the plant world, the, the animal world, and the environment, the weather, all of that. All of that, all of the models that are generated on these computers and stuff, these are all done because of years and years and years and years of statistics and, va and valuable data that has been collected and stored in the form of statistics. Now, the, our government, we have a Bureau of Vital Statistics. This uh, agency looks over the human population here in the United States and how many people there are, what they're doing, what kind of lives they lead, how, what, how many of them die, why they died. All sorts of statistics are gathered from our population here in the United States, and these are printed and gathered and printed by the Bureau of Vital Statistics. Now you would think with a society that's so geared on statistics, I mean business people, projections in business, I mean if they didn't have statistics from past years and past sales and stuff, they wouldn't know where to begin. They may make too much of a product and be sitting with half of it at the end of the year when they should be sitting for the cash for it to have in their bank accounts to go the next year. So statistics are a very, very, very valuable tool. and. You'd think that a society that depends so much on statistics, that our government also would depend on statistics, but they don't. And when you look at the Bureau of Vital Statistics in one particular area that they cover, and that is deaths by, you know, how people died. And some of the top killers in this country are cigarettes and alcohol. Those two together claim the lives of about 500,000 people. And there's a whole list of things on this list of, of, what, of how people die and all. And you, should, you should look at that. Go to the Bureau of Vital Statistics 2010. Look at the recent most published data. And interestingly enough, when you go all the way down to the bottom of the list, and this has been this way since the dawn of time, but since statistics were being published, but if you look at the bottom there, they have cannabis, marijuana listed there. And when you go out to the right column to see the number of deaths that have been occurred that year, you see a big fat zero. And that's what's been going on. This has been a published data, published fact of, for, for quite some time, even for as long as statistics have been being recorded. So with this in mind, when we look at the fact that 500,000 people die from the use of alcohol and cigarettes, and we learned from alcohol prohibition back in the 20s, we can't make that substance illegal. And quoting the chairman of the Office of Drug Policy for the White House, uh, the lady said that cigarettes are what they are. It is what it is. That was her answer when people asked her about, well, why are cigarettes legal? They kill a lot of people. And when you look at the Controlled Substance Act, 
one of the chief things that they use to put something on con any controlled substance, but particularly controlled substance one, which is the most dangerous level, and that's where cannabis is at. One of the criterion is, is that, it, that it's a danger and threat to the public society. Now, if it's killing 500,000 people a year, that certainly falls within that criterion. Yet these two substances do not fall under the Controlled Substance Act. They don't have the law enforcement chasing them down, knocking their doors down, arresting them for cannabis like, like the cannabis smokers are. And so this is really a, 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 a wrong in our society. We, all of a sudden, the government and the people, which depend so heavily on statistics and all, when it comes to the statistics concerning cannabis, we, th we totally throw the book out the door. We don't even look at it. And, and yet, we don't have legislation against substances that we do have statistics on that are very deadly. Uh, it doesn't make sense. I mean, why would we waste the resources? And it's around 100 to $200 billion a year. By the time you add it all up, the pure Bureau of Prisons, prison industrial complex, the Homeland Security, Border Control, all of those, Coast Guard, DEA, Justice Department, all of those. When you add all the cost up uh, for what we are spending to house not only cannabis users, but drug crimes in general, we are spending a fortune, around $200 billion a year. Not to mention that we outlawed the hemp industry, which would be a trillion and a half dollar industry right now. So we, we ignore statistics when it comes to the benefit of the law or the benefit of the government. The people who have been arrested for cannabis and cannabis crimes and stuff and basically have had their lives ruined and all, they, they weren't, uh, they, they, they never at one time, the only, the only problem that they ever had with cannabis was the law. Using the cannabis never kept them from keeping a job, never kept them from going to school and getting their degrees or anything like that. None of that ever happened. Didn't keep them from having children, like they said, it would make you sterile. None of that happened. All that was a bunch of lies. So if, if we have this type of society that it's okay that two substances that kill more people than all of the others combined, and you th throw in prescription drugs, I mean, add another 200,000 to the death toll, but is it, is it right for our society to continue cannabis prohibition and, and, and arrest people and ruin their lives when really what they're doing statistically has been shown to be the safest thing out there? It just doesn't make sense. Now, it, it wouldn't make sense if the laws were going after the alcohol and cigarettes for the number of people that die from that. But we learned back in the 20s that prohibition doesn't work. And I can imagine what would happen if they went after the people who smoke cigarettes. I mean, you talk about a revolution in this country. It would, be, it would make the drug war look, look like a little firecracker match at the local state fair. I mean, it would absolutely be nothing. So when you, when you weigh in the statistics, and they are a vital tool, and they do tell you, they do give you an accurate handle of what's going on and all. Cannabis is not dangerous. And it, and it certainly does not deserve to be illegal. And it certainly doesn't deserve to be on a controlled substance act. And it certainly doesn't deserve to have to have law enforcement spend $200 billion a year in this country to enforce it. I mean, we, we, and we, we're holding up a trillion and a half dollar hemp industry. Let's, let's stop this foolishness. We don't need to be going down this path of stupid any longer. If, if our society can accept the fact that alcohol and cigarettes, the two most deadly substances on the planet, and that kill 500,000 people, 500,000 of our American citizens every year, if our society can accept that, and we don't send any mass gangs of law enforcement, DEA, all of that knocking people's doors down because they leave in the liquor store with a six pack, or they just bought a pack of cigarettes at the local convenience store, if, we, if we're not gonna go to those extremes, we have no right to do that against cannabis or other drugs. The illicit drugs combined don't kill what aspirin, prescription to aspirin alone kills in this country. So we, we really need to take a different look at this. And we, we, we're concerned about America's economy and all. It makes sense to, to uh, do completely away with the drug war. It's bringing down all sorts of, of issues in this country. And it's causing repercussions that extend way beyond the drugs and way beyond the drug war. And, and, and not to mention the 50,000 innocent lives that have been slaughtered south of our border. We're human beings. We're just like them. We're no different. We're no better. We are human beings. Fellow human beings of the planet are being slaughtered because we have a law in place that allows a cartel to act vicious 
and behave viciously. We do not need to allow this to continue. And it's a simple fix. And the simple fix brings about the hemp industry, which will bring about many, many jobs in this country. Let's do this, America. We're it can start with the simply as planting some seeds. Thank you for joining the panel.